1 Corinthians chapter 11. Try to imitate me, even as I myself try to imitate the Messiah. Now I praise you because you have remembered everything I told you and observed the traditions just the way I passed them on to you. But I want you to understand the head of every man is the Messiah, and the head of a wife is her husband, and the head of the Messiah is God. Every man who prays or prophesies wears something down over his head, who, who wears, wearing something down over his head brings shame to his head. But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head unveiled brings shame to her head. There is no difference between her and a woman who has had her head shaved. For if a woman is not veiled, let her also have her hair cut short. But if it is shameful for a woman to wear her hair short, cut short or have her head, head shaved, then let her be veiled. For a man indeed should not have his head veiled, because he is the image and glory of God, and the woman is the glory of man. For man was not made for the woman, but woman from man. And indeed man was not created for the sake of the woman, but woman for the sake of the man. The reason a woman should show, should show by veiling her head that she is under authority has to do with the angels. Nevertheless, in union with the Lord, neither is woman independent of man, nor is man independent of woman. For as the woman was made from the man, so also the man is now born through the woman. But everything is from God. Decide for yourselves. Is it appropriate for a woman to pray to God when she is unveiled? Doesn't the nature of things itself teach you that a man who wears his hair long degrades himself? But a woman who wears her hair long enhances her appearance, because her hair has been giving, given to her as a covering. However, if anyone wants to argue about it, the fact remains that we have no such custom, nor do the messianic communities of God. But in giving you this next instruction, I do not praise you, because when you meet together, it does more harm than good. For in the first place, I hear that when you gather together as a congregation, you divide up into cliques, and to a degree I believe it, granted that there must be some divisions among you in order to show that, show who are the ones in the, in the right. Thus, when you gather together, it is not to eat a meal of the Lord, because you eat your meal. Because as you eat your meal, each one goes ahead on his own, so that one stays hungry while another is already drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or are you trying to show your contempt for God's messianic community or embarrass those who are poor? What am I supposed to say to you? Am I supposed to praise you? Well, for this, I don't praise you. For what I received from the Lord is just what I passed on to you, that the Lord Yeshua, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had made the barakah, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial to me. Likewise, also the cup after the meal, saying, This cup is the new covenant affected by my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, as a memorial to me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the Lord's bread or drinks the Lord's cup in an unworthy manner will be guilty of desecrating the body and the blood of the Lord. So let a person examine himself first, and then he may eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For a person who eats and drinks without recognizing the body eats and drinks judgment upon himself. This is why many among you are weak and sick, and some have died. If we would examine ourselves, we would not come under judgment. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined, so that we will not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brothers, when you gather together to eat, wait for one another. If someone is hungry, he should eat at home, so that when you meet together, it will not result in judgment. As for the other matters, I will instruct you about them when I come. End of 1 Corinthians chapter 11.